Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here in Tel Aviv. I studied here before I uh, went to Stanford. And also, thanks um, for inviting me. So this is a joint work with uh, Ramesh and Gabriel from Stanford uh, on quality selection in two-sided markets. So I will start with two uh, basic facts. One is that uh, platforms collect information about the participating sellers, and we see this more and more, but platforms also influence the quality of uh, the participating sellers. And of course, we have here uh, Professor uh, Tadelis that has many great papers on this uh, topic and also real-world experience. Um, so I give two examples of how platforms influence the quality of uh, participating sellers. This will be the focus uh, of this talk. Uh, one example is that platforms ban low-quality sellers. So this uh, phenomenon is uh, in, in ride-sharing platforms and cleaning services platforms. For example, this is from Uber, and we see that if a driver as a rating that is below some threshold, uh, in this example it's 4.6, his account might be deactivated, which means that this driver is completely removed from the platform. Of course, this threshold can depend on the city, uh, location, and other factors. A second example that we saw today uh, in the morning is that platform uh, boosts the visibility of high-quality sellers. So this is an example from Bonanza, a less known uh, marketplace, but a rising one, um, where they sell non-traditional products. So for example, you look for ancient Egypt uh, papyrus, product uh, death, and this is what you see at the top of the page. So you have you know, a case for your iPhone maybe, and other products, uh, but all of the sellers are top-rated sellers. So this means that the platform um, boosts the visibility of these uh, sellers. Okay, so this really motivated uh, our research question, which is how much of its available information about seller's quality should a platform share with buyers in order to maximize its revenue? And then we saw also today in, in the morning, th this is a difficult task, right? Because the mapping from the information that the platform shares with buyers to market outcome is complicated. Right? So after the platform sh uh, shares the information, buyers and sellers take strategic actions like entry or pricing or quantity decisions. And we also have equilibrium considerations. So for example, supply uh, equals demand. So in this work, we introduced a stylized approach to study this mapping and characterize the optimal information uh, structure. So this is what we do in this uh, work. Okay, so this is the mapping that we want to study. The platform chooses an information structure, and we want to study how it influences the platform's revenue. So think about information structure. It can consist of banning low-quality sellers or giving budgets to high-quality sellers, but we also allow for richer information structures. I will define an information structure formally when I will present uh, the model. So one of... Uh, our key uh, contribution for this uh, work is that we reduce the, the platform's problem to a price discrimination uh, problem. What we show is that each information structure that the platform chooses induces a certain menu of equilibrium price quality pairs. So this is exactly a price discrimination problem because the platform can choose over uh, these price quality pairs instead of choosing an information structure. But this pro uh, problem is constrained. Why it's constrained? The platform can choose only menus that arise in equilibrium. So they can only choose these price quality pairs that arise in equilibrium, and it will be, it, it, this equilibrium conditions we will talk later, it will have more constraints than the usual IC and IR constraints. For example, supply equals demand and additional requirements. What is the advantage uh, of this approach? So why we, we, li we like this price discrimination approach? Two main reasons. One is it can capture different market arrangements. So for example, we introduced two distinct two-sided market models in this paper, but you can think about different 
uh, two-sided market models, and they reduce to this, the information uh, decision of the platform reduced to a price discrimination problem. A second reason is that it's usually easier to solve than solving for the optimal information structure in two-sided markets, which is usually a complicated task. Okay, so we analyze this price discrimination problem, and then we show that a very simple information structure is optimal under certain conditions. In this information structure, the platform ban a certain portion of low-quality sellers, and, not share, and it doesn't share any information about the participating sellers. So under certain conditions, this very simple information structure is actually optimal. This shed light on uh, information disclosure practices that we see also in real world platforms where they remove low quality sellers or highlight high quality sellers, as we saw uh, in the examples. Okay, so let me uh, jump into uh, the model. So the platform's information, the platform has some information about seller's quality. So X is a set of seller's quality and the platform information is summarized by a partition. An information structure is a family of sets such that if a set is in the information structure, it's a union of sets in the original partition. Okay, so this is an information structure. Of course, you can think about the more general information structures, and we also do it in the, um, we can do it in the paper. Let's think about a very simple example for this talk. Maybe this is an information structure. The, the seller's quality are just the interval 0, 1, and maybe this is the platform's uh, original information. It's just this partition, A1, A2, A3, A4. Let's look on maybe two examples of information structures. So we have I1 and I2. In both information structures, the sellers in A1 and A2 are banned from the platform. They are completely removed. In I1, um, the platform shares it, its information it has about sellers in A3 and sellers in A4. So the buyers will know that sellers in A3 has a quality between 0.5 and 0.75, and sellers in A4. In information structure I2, the platform ban sellers in A1 and A2, but doesn't share any information on sellers in A3 and A4. Okay, so this is clear. So this is the information structures. So, the so I will describe now the game. In the game, the platform first chooses an information structure. Then we, we consider two models. So in one model that is motivated uh, more by ride-sharing platforms or cleaning services platforms, uh, the platform actually chooses the prices also. And sellers choose quantity. Okay, so the quantity is you think, uh, you think here how many hours to work, something uh, like that. In model two, the sellers make entry and pricing decisions. So this is more motivated by e-commerce, like eBay and other platforms where sellers also make entry decisions and they also make pricing decisions, and quantities are determined in equilibrium. Today I will focus uh, on model one. Okay, so model one. We can discuss offline on model two. What buyers do, buyers form beliefs about the seller's quality, and they choose whether to buy a product, and if so, from which set of sellers to buy it. So I will go more in detail to the um, buyers and uh, sellers' decisions. So uh, let's see. So, so the buyers, the, they're heterogeneous in their type. The type is how much they value quality relative to price. So a buyer with type M, what will be his utility is type times the expected quality minus the price. So now remember we are in, uh, in the model that the platform chooses the prices. So the price here is set by the platform. And lambda is just the buyer's beliefs that will be determined in equilibrium. What the sellers uh, do, so the sellers in this model, they choose quantities. Okay, so they choose quantities and they want to maximize uh, their profit and you can have a more general profit function. For this talk, I will assume it's just the quantity times the price minus a function 
that depends on um, on their type times uh, h to the power of alpha. So this is some kind of a cost function. Okay, so we have equilibrium. So what uh, we will have in equilibrium uh, is the following. So the buyer's beliefs must be consistent with Bayesian updating and with seller's actions. So this is the first uh, equilibrium condition. Second, the actions of each side of the market are optimal, must be optimal. And third, supply equals demand for each set, for each set in the information structure. So this is the three conditions. Uh, the beliefs must be consistent with Bayesian updating, actions are optimal, and supply equals demand. Now note that this limits uh, the platform's uh, ability to design the market. We have really additional equilibrium requirements to the standard uh, requirement in the market design literature, right, of IC and IRR constraints, or so optimality of the actions. Okay, so let's look on, um, on the following um, example. So in this example, uh, this is the information structure I. Let me remind you so what this information structure means. So the sellers in A1 and A2 are completely removed from the platform. They are banned. Sellers, so, and the platform shares in its information it has about sellers in A3 and sellers in A4. And suppose we have equilibrium prices and equilibrium expected quality. So we will say that the menu I, so, I'm sorry, that the information structure I induces a menu of these prices and expected quality. These are the equilibrium prices and expected qualities. So each information structure will induce some menu in this uh, way. And uh, so this is kind of the economics, but we also have, I have one line for the, <laughs> this is a computation that we actually, okay, you can ask, of course, this mapping can be very complicated, right? You choose information structure, how can you, you, you know what menus are induced by this information structure. So we provide uh, in the paper, it's a bit technical, a convex program to find the menus that are induced by this information structure. So every information structure, you can formulate a convex program to find the menus that it induced by this menu, by, by this information structure. Okay, so instead of analyzing this information uh, disclosure policy, we analyze a price discrimination problem of choosing menus. So let me briefly describe this price discrimination problem. So menus, a menu is a finite set of price quality pairs. So when I say a menu, it's just this finite set. And we have the constraint set. What is a constraint set? I denoted by C is a set of feasible menus. In the two-sided market models, we need first to characterize it, right? We solve for equilibrium, we can get this constraint set. It's all this, the menus that are arise in equilibrium. Buyer's utility of uh, type and buyer is again just is, is type times the quality minus the price. And the distribution uh, is F with density function uh, small f. What is a platform uh, problem? It's just to maximize uh, the revenue. So it's just to choose, it, it, it chooses a feasible menu so it must belong to the constraint set, to maximize the total transaction value. Here, DIC is just the total mass of buyers that choose the price quality pair PIQI when the platform chooses the menu, the feasible menu C. Okay, so this is very easy to, to write the problem, and this is one slide, this is a, the, the problem that the platform solved. Um, okay, let me just, uh, ah, so I'll jump right to the main theorem. Uh, we only need just one definition for this talk, a very simple definition. A menu C is said to be K-separating if it contains exactly K different price quality pairs. Okay, so it's a simple definition. And the theorem is that suppose that the density functions elasticity. So remember, what is the density? So it's just the de of the buyer's types, right? So this is the density function. Suppose the elasticity is bounded below by minus two. I'll explain the intuition soon, but suppose for now. And we need, of course, another technical condition on the constraint set, uh, that it has enough good one separating menus. In our application, it will hold. 
then there exists a one separating menu that maximizes the platform's revenue. Okay, so it's just, it's all about the elasticity. If the elasticity is bounded below by minus two, you can find a one separating menu that is optimal. Now, I'll discuss a bit about um, previous literature. So usually in previous literature, we remember for in price discrimination, it's a big literature. Actually, the platform wants to use all the price quality pairs, at least if the virtual valuation function is increasing. Here it's not the case. And let's discuss two main differences. One main, and I think the biggest difference is first the costs. So if we think about uh, price discrimination problems, usually the platform pays the cost, right? Of um, uh, producing a, a higher quality product. But in our case, the platform doesn't pay the cost, it's actually incurred by the sellers, right? So when we reduce the information disclosure uh, problem to a price discrimination problem, there are no costs for the platform. The platform only get commission, higher quality cost, the sellers more. So the cost for the platforms is for the platform is zero. A second uh, difference, okay, that I al already mentioned is the constraints. So it's not only ICN, the problem cannot choose any menu that satisfies the ICN are constraint. There are these additional equilibrium constraints. So that's uh, the main differences and that's why the results are uh, completely uh, different. Um, okay. Let me jump uh, to the two-sided uh, market model. That's what we wanted to study. So, immediately after we analyze the price discrimination problem, we can go back to the information disclosure policy problem. And uh, what we show is that banning a, sort, a certain portion of low-quality sellers and not sharing any information about the other sellers is optimal for the platform. And again, we need it's the same condition as before, the density function's elasticity is bounded below by minus two. And some condition about um, the supply of high quality sellers. It cannot be the case that you have a very uh, small supply of high quality sellers. It's a bit of a technical condition. But if you have these two conditions, the optimal information structure consists of one set of sellers. That's it, of one set of sellers, which means that the platform doesn't share any information about the sellers that participate in the platform, okay? Um, okay, so let's think about intuition a bit. So suppose that the platform expands from the optimal one separating menu to a two separating menu. What is the trade-off? So the trade-off is simple, right? On the one hand, this will increase the mass of buyers, right, if we have two a menu of two, the, I will have more buyers, but some buyers pay a lower price. Okay, so I have more buyers, but some buyers pay a lower price because I have a, a two separating menu now. So it turns out that when the elasticity is not too low, the problem doesn't lose too many buyers. So the decrease in the mass of buyers is not too high. And that's why a one separating menu is better than a two separating menu, right? If I don't lose many buyers, then the one separating menu is actually good. And that's exactly what the elasticity condition uh, says. It says that I, I don't lose, that the platform doesn't lose many buyers when moving from one separating to two separating uh, menu. Okay, and, and just to mention, this condition does not depend on the virtual valuation function. So for example, uniform distribution will satisfy the elasticity and will have an increasing virtual valuation function, but you can find distributions that has one property but doesn't have the other. So it doesn't depend on, um, on that. Okay, let me uh, conclude. And so we reduce a two-sided market information disclosure problem to a price discrimination problem, which this we hope it's of independent uh, interest. And we show that uh, removing a certain uh, per uh, portion of low-quality sellers is, is optimal, and also not sharing any information about the other sellers. And what we, it's still a work in progress, I will be happy to hear uh, your comments. What we still uh, work on is um, 
is further development of the link between the information structure design in a platform and a menu, menu design in price discrimination problem. We ask how, how general it is, maybe in a dynamic setting, maybe also the platform learns about the seller's quality. And we also have some results um, about when, when this elasticity condition doesn't hold. So for example, what is the revenue loss from using uh, still a one separating uh, menu? So that's kind of things that uh, we are still working on. Okay, so that's it. If there, is, if there are any questions. I have one. So essentially, single information with not telling any information is basically at odds at what we see, like Uber and other platforms, and also they have these top badges, right? Right. right. So, so now it's a good question. So sometimes you can think about. So that's um, sometimes in top-rated sellers, for example, think about the example from Bonanza, when you see only top-rated sellers. So maybe the sellers that uh, don't have top-rated sellers, in some products at least, they don't sell at all, or sell very small amounts. So this is almost one separating. And um, right, so in Uber we see more, but when they started that, they had some kind of a one separating menu. Now we see more, there are of course other considerations like um, supply and demand, right? You want, so there are other considerations that we don't capture. It. For example, you want to balance supply and demand. So you have Uber lift line and something like that. But if you think only about the menu, okay, this is what we do here. So. Okay. 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 Thank you.